everyone. Thanks for watching this presentation. My name is Riman Reyes. I'm CTO of Coldplay Software, uh, which we have been working in SQL for a very long time. And with me, I have James Bronman, Principal Engineer at Intel, who has also been working in open standards uh, for a very long time. And together, we are going to be talking about open standard, multi-vendor A training, and inference with LLMs. So large language models have been very popular recently, and uh, it's a type of neural network that is trained on lots of data and can predict the next word based on previous tokens. It does so by combining a number of transformer layers that extract content from the words, called tokens, in the text. ChatGPT or Llama are examples of popular LLM models. Typically, people will design and develop LLMs in frameworks like PyTorch, which is fully supported on Intel platforms. However, there are many other ways of using and deploying LLMs. In this presentation, we introduce two LLM frameworks based on C and C++ with good extensions and show that they can be ported effectively using open standards and run on Intel or any other platform. Let's start now about our experience porting Llama CPP CUDA backend onto SQL and how we got that running on Intel GPUs. What is Llama CPP? Llama CPP is an open source LLM inference engine that is very popular in the community and people are using to build other projects based on it. On it. The interesting quality of a Llama CPP is that it enables large language models like Llama or Mistral to run on CPUs or smaller GPUs by using a custom quantization scheme. It also provides an efficient LLM inference engine written in C++ that has backends to many popular platforms like Intel CPUs and GPUs, but even also others like Apple Silicon or GPUs from NVIDIA or AMD. Quantization is a process where the precision of the numbers used to represent a model, parameters, and activations is reduced by using different numerical representation. Typically, running a model like Llama 2 with 7 billion parameters will only be possible on a large multi-GPU server. But by reducing the precision from FP32 to FP16, we can fit that model on a server node with a discrete GPU. But using the custom quantization types available in Llama CPP, we can reduce further the size of the model so it can fit on a normal laptop or on a discrete GPU. And we can also fit larger models that typically will, will even fit like the Llama 2 with 13 billion parameters. Reducing the precision normally means reducing accuracy, which could lead to hallucinations. But by using these custom quantization types, the accuracy loss does not result on a significant degradation of the model outputs. So how did we go and add the SQL support to Llama CVP? Well, in this case, we opted to use SQLomatic to assist on our migration path from existing CUDA support. First, we build Llama CVP as usual, except for adding the intercept build command before our make command. The intercept build command does what it says. It intercepts the build commands and creates a metadata file that can be then used by the DPCT tool from Cyclomatic to help migrate the vendor-specific CUDA code onto the SQL standard equivalent code. Once the code is migrated, we build it for SQL and NVIDIA GPUs using the CodePlay plugins. We simply take the directory output by DCPT and build the project from there using the right, flask, the right flags to set NVIDIA as the DPC++ compilation target. Then we run it using the normal Llama CPP parameters, selecting the CUDA GPU to ensure the device selected by the SQL runtime is NVIDIA GPU available on the system. Now that we have verified that everything works as expected on an original system, we can recreate the steps on a system with an Intel GPU and get Llama CPP as before, build the application, select the level zero GPU device and execute with the same parameters. So how does that work? Of course it works. Here is the output from the SQL backend running, running with a Cydon CPU and an NVIDIA A100 GPU. We run a script that simply prints the available backends and runs Llama CPP with a prompt asking what is LLM, which we hope we can answer. And we see how Llama CPP works as usual and generates a decent answer to the question. The quantized model takes a while to load and run on the system, so we accelerate the video slightly to avoid waiting. And now we can see that Llama CPP is generating an output explaining what is an LLM.
So now we can see the the same demonstration by running on the Intel uh, in the Intel system, which has an Intel Xeon CPU and an Intel Data Center GPU Max 1100. We're running the same model and passing the same prompt. In both cases, the model used is Llama 3.1 with 70 billion parameters using the Llama CPP custom quantization called Q4QS. This means that the, the model will not fit normally, but because we use the quantization, the model can fit now. And now we can see how the output comes and is, uh, and is answering what an LM, in, an LM is uh, on, on screen. And now I'm going to hand over to James, who is going to talk about the LLM training with SQL and uh, O1 DNN. Thanks, Ruman. My name is James Broadman, and I'm a principal engineer in the compiler team at Intel. And today I'm going to be talking about LLM training with using only SQL and one DNN. So what is LLM.C? LLM.C is another open source project, although this one focuses on LLM training and inference, and the core project is written using Pure C and CUDA. It was started by Andre Karpathy, and it can be found on GitHub. And one of the nice things about this framework is that no PyTorch or other things are required to make it work. By default, LLM.C will train and evaluate a GP2 model, and it supports multiple precisions, including bfloat16, fp32, or tf32. For its matrix multiplications, uh, LLM.C makes use of the Kublas library, or optionally, it also makes use of QDNN for the flash attention parts of the LLM training. An important part of LLM.C is that one of its key goals is really to be an educational tool, and that's important. The code is very well documented and easy to understand, so it's a great resource to learn how LLMs work. For each piece of this framework, there are standalone testable versions of every kernel. As well, there are different versions of these kernels that vary in complexity and performance. The simplest kernels are naive ports from C code, whereas the more complex versions add fusions and take advantage of hardware features, including enhanced reductions, shared local memory, or use of atomic operations. And another important goal of this project is that it doesn't accept any pull requests that will improve performance by a bit, but it does so by adding a lot of complex code. The code really wants to remain simple and easy to understand while still providing fairly good and competitive performance. So next, let's talk about how we took this CUDA code and rewrote it using Sickle. So the compiler we used for this was our DPC++ SQL compiler that can be found in the OneAPI toolkit. And whereas the stock code uses Kublas for its matrix multiplications, we're going to use the OneDNN library, also part of OneAPI. And after we do this, the resulting code can run on all modern Intel GPUs, from the integrated GPU found in your laptop to our discrete graphics cards that can be used for gaming and compute, like the Arc series, or even the data center GPU series, like Ramon mentioned earlier, the Mac series. But since we've written our code now using a portable open standard, the code can be portable to other devices. So with a few changes, probably under 50 lines of code, and using the open source version of 1DNN, the same code could then also run on x86 CPUs using OpenCL, or like Ramon mentioned earlier, NVIDIA GPUs using the CodePlay DPC++ plugin for NVIDIA hardware. So next, let's talk about how we actually did the porting from CUDA to SICL. So when I started this effort, my main goal was to minimize the differences between the CUDA version and the SICL version of the code. And on the screen here, I just have a diff window of Visual Studio Code with the CUDA version on the left and the SICL version of the code on the right. And you can see there aren't really that many differences, and the differences that do exist are fairly minimal. So one of the things I did to help simplify the code was I used helper functions to mitigate some of the differences between the semantics of SICL and CUDA. CUDA relies on certain built-in variables to help programmers index their computations, whereas SICL uses explicit IDs. So in the SICL version, I created simple helper functions that take an ID and return the equivalent value to what the CUDA built-in variable would be. 
There were also cases where I was able to actually simplify the CUDA code dramatically by using features of the SICL 2020 specification, like group algorithms, in particular, group reductions that can simplify complex patterns into one line of code, but still give very good performance. The other big change, like I've already mentioned, is instead of using Kublas to do matrix multiplication, I made use of the 1DNN library. And all these things put together resulted in a code that's very easy to read, very highly diffable, so it's easy to keep track of the differences between CUDA and SICL. And as the CUDA code improves, it's easy to then port those changes over to SICL. So next, we have a demonstration of this code running on a few GPUs. First, we do it on the integrated GPU on my laptop in the Windows subsystem for Linux environment. So we can set up our environment and then run the code. And it's using the GPT-2 124 million model and the tiny Shakespeare data set. And we see it starts by allocating a lot of data for the tensors and parameters, and then it begins the training. It will perform several steps and periodically perform inference to test the uh, accuracy of the model. So since this one's running on an integrated GPU that has a fair amount of performance, but not as much as this discrete GPU, we'll cancel this one and move on to the next one. So now we're doing the same thing on a discrete GPU, in this case, the ARC A750 that I have in a little desktop under my desk. And we repeat the same process, initialize our environment, and then run the code. Again, we allocate our tensors, and we see now it runs much faster because we have a much more powerful GPU. But it's the same code. Nothing was changed. And here we can now see the periodic inference steps as well. By default, the model will train for 74 steps, but all of this is configurable. And indeed, you can even use different LLM models other than GPT-2. Thank you for watching our presentation. We invite you to try out both Llama CPP and LLM.C for yourself and to run all of these models on your Intel GPUs and other hardware. We also invite you to contribute to these projects and the SICL support in them, both with improved performance and new functionality. Most importantly, we invite you to share your results and experiences using SICL to write AI applications. Thank you.